Bum, bum, bum. Bum. Hey. Hi. Hello. How are you? Are you good? I hope you're doing well. Because I am, even though I'm tired. I suddenly got tired as soon as I started stream. Oh well. <laughs> I want to play Final Fantasy. I've been... Oh, I've been, um... Limiting my... Progress. Story-wise and mechanics-wise. Because I want to be... I want to do it on stream. I want to do my new class on stream. I want to do story stuff on stream. So. That's what I've been waiting for. But hi. I hope you're all doing well tonight. This is time... For a late night Final Fantasy. Oh my goodness, look at everybody. But my head got padded. Oh jeez. Time to hide that box. Alright, I want to do this uh, golden saucer thing real quick. It'll happen in about a happen in about a minute, and then we'll we'll move on and go do my monk quest, so I can become a monk, so that my my class can stop sucking. Wow. Wow, e. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I think it'd be great. Is that a Rothgar? Whoa. Isn't that cool? Is that a shark? Oh my god. It's a modern major general. Well, there's a lot of people here. Any way the wind blows. Oh, here we go, boys. Time for RNG, the game. <laughs> I'll sit right here. Ba -ba -ba. There's no real point in moving around in this one because I have yet to see any indication where where a typhon goes. Literally random. As far as I can tell. Maybe there's a way to know where he goes, but I have yet to find it, so... Basically, just sit down and hope you don't die. Basically, like real life. Yeah, and we'll do this and we'll get however so many gold saucer points so I can continue to fund my... Horrible, horrible fashion addiction. That's my Thaumaturge gear, by the way. Look at him, he has glasses. Oh my god. So fucking cute. Entries for the main stage events are now closed. Time for all of us to die. There they all go. Ah. <sighs> Oh no. Eh, whatever. 
It happens. Alrighty. So. We have... I talked to him. Because I was like, ah, if it's like a minor quest, I'll do it on my own. But apparently this is like an entire storyline. That you'll be doing for like the rest of the game. So we kind of want to do it on stream. Uh, we got... We've been hired basically to... Uh, Escort a really rich, apparently military historian guy. So that's what we'll be doing. Wait, this is a wonder score. I'm going the wrong way. I need to go this way. And this is how we'll learn how to be a monk. So we can learn how to punch good. Because a pugilist may be cool, but a monk is even cooler. You know I want to re-decorate my boy. Because the gambler barding I don't think works for my outfit. If I... It'll work for my black mage, but not for my monk. Back to Ulda. So goddamn, we can finally be a monk. God, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I've been putting off stream and failing to stream forever, and I've been wanting to be a monk really, really bad. Really, really bad, guys. Come on, let me punch. I just want to punch people better. I got stuck in a dungeon. On a duty roulette. Where, um... Apparently, it thought it'd be a good idea to put me in a dungeon that I was underleveled for. So that went well. But all of the people in there were really nice. But I felt really bad because I was DPS. And... I was doing like nothing. <laughs> Alrighty, Eric. Yeah, talk to me, buddy. Ah, oh, my bunch prone manservant, I presume. You may and shall call me Eric. You were to guard my life, even at the cost of your own, and aid in my revolution revolutionary research, whenever and however asked. Know that my primary endeavor is to reconstruct the military histories of old the ethereal analysis of ancient battlegrounds. Nerd. I assume the words conjure in your simple mind romantic images of vast plains and open valleys, with armies charging blindly at one another. False. I seek to know where the armies of old were deployed, where they made camp and marched. No doubt you think, su think such lands to be those snug of and sung of. No doubt you think such... No doubt you think such lands to be those sung of in the songs of bards. False. They are here, beneath our very feet. And to find them and determine precisely how events unfolded upon them is my purpose. No doubt you jumped at the chance to aid in my work. Tell me, which of my treatises have you read? All of None. Gods, I knew you adventurers had a reputation for being unlettered. I didn't know you actually made efforts to remain so. It matters not. I require only that you work with diligence. Unlike that Wittergelt buffoon. The man proved to be sloth itself. Alas, he is a monk of Alamigo. I suppose the fool was too busy opening his chakra, or whatever it is those barbarians do all day. His third eye. His penis. I admit, he, keen he seemed keenly interested in my research. But now he's gone off t to 12 nowhere and has yet to return. Do you understand the sheer magnitude of this inconvenience? It's about a 12 on the Richter. Good, good. You, so you show that much promise, at least. But let us speak of more of my work. Our first destination is a Sildi excavation site in central Thanalan. 
I believe I, I believe events of great import the history of Sil D has transpired there. Hmm? Surely you have heard of Sil D. Or are you deaf as well as dull? Very well, I see you require some instruction. It would be remiss of me as an academic to allow you to wallow in such ignorance. Sildi was plugged in, plunged into chaos in the wake of King Lala, Lalawefu's demise, or the King of Springs as he was known. Despite the success of economic reforms, fomented unrest amongst the people, resulting in violent outbreaks throughout the kingdom. Sildi was stolen at the time, distant descendant, attack was ordered. And so, irony of ironies, hadn't been for that horse. And nobody knew how the goat got on the roof. Fascinating, is it not? It is enough to convince one things could have not happened any other way, no? False. One among my colleagues disagreed with his interpretation of events. He claimed to have evidence suggesting otherwise, but all trace of it disappeared before it was published. My own research shall unearth any such evidence should it truly exist. I shall know the truth. Granted, you are not the brightest coal in the brazier, but surely such a prospect entices even you. <clears throat> and so we make for the CLD excavation site in central Thanalan. Travel the way before me to see that it is safe. And once there, set up this aeroth aetherometer. And should you ever come to know more of the Aori, <coughs> should you care to ever, should you ever care to know more of the Aorisian myths, military history, man, do come and see me. It is a personal crusade of mine to guide the dullards of this realm towards some modicum of enlightenment. What a friendly man! Alrighty, where do you go? Right down from Black Brush, Sta Black Brush Station. Boop. And uh, money be damned, we have basically infinite money now, so. We can go anywhere we want, baby. Squeeze, squeeze. Up, uh. What? Oh, there it is. I was confused. Let's go, my boy. Quentin. Oh, yeah, I also acquired a racing chocobo named Monkwe. She's pretty good. Oh, my God. It's a ballerina. I don't want to fuck with that. Oh, where do you want to have a monk? Monka. Hmm. Level sync is in effect. <gasps> oh my god. It's a good thing I have infinite power. Well done. Now we need only wait for the aetherometer to gauge the... Hmm? Imps. There are fiends about Weeble. They are often drawn to the lingering sense of blood and death. Well, this is what you're here for. Have at it. I punch. Have at thee then. Beat the bloody hells out of the blasted things. There are measurements to be taken. Fine, nerd.
The data is flowing now. You got it. I punch. I punch. I punch people, John. It's what I do. I'm like the Garfield of physical violence. What? Robbie Sue. Oh my god. Here comes a true foe. They're gonna ruin his day though. <laughs> So many boys. Oh man. Oh, you want to go another round? Is that magic? Oh my god. He's so cool. Oh, hey. You have the starter gear. The starter, like, job gear. Am I becoming a god? Are we fusion dancing? Winter guilt. So good of you to drag yourself all this way, you purblind sluggard. Ah, oh, and Weeble. You have far exceeded what admittedly low expectations, expectations I had of you. I suppose introductions are in order. Far be it for me to deny the realms unread to the comfort of one another's company. Wittergeld, Weeble. Weeble, Wittergeld. The, the, the monk I spoke of sent to me by Gagaruna. Up. I tried to make a pupil of Wittergelt as well, but he has little mind for history. His primitive beliefs in the witchcraft of chakra and spiritual, en spiritual energies have a tenacious hold on him. Oh, truly? This is the area where there have been sightings of Walking Dead. I've heard t the tales. Some claim they've seen an apparition wearing the garb of an ancient commander. Careful, there are still dangers about. Okie dokie, his work is dear to him. That is good. He thirsts for knowledge, for truth. Discovery awakens him. Ahem. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is a little sore. On account of I'm thirsty. Discovery awakens him. You have awoken, t you too have awoken, friend. Can you not feel it? Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Do not be frightened. Here is a battle, long ago. Much energy remains. It has found you. It flows through you. Your chakra has been opened. This was the light that shone from you. It is as Eric said. Wittergeld is my name. I'm a brother of the monkhood. My order is the Fist of Ralgar. Our way is to train the body and mind. Isn't that the God of Destruction? The Fist is our weapon. With it, we put down our enemies. The energy within us moves the Fist. The Chakra is the seat of that... The Chakra is the seat of that energy. It is a sacred place. It can be opened, and the life force within controlled. Chakra exists in all that light, all that lives, in all beings, yet not all beings can open them. Much training is needed, and great discipline. With these, the life force can be commanded. Those, there are those who require no training, 
Their inner strength is such that it forces the chakra open. I've heard of this happening, but never have I seen it until now. I see in you great conviction. You mean to walk the monk's path. And so I will give you this, a soul crystal, the mark of my order. None but a monk may hold it, and only then would the orders leave. But your chakra is awakened, that is clear, and so you are worthy. Then he bore that crystal before you. It remembers them, their breath and their movement. They will one day be yours. But your chakra must open further. Only then can the crystal's memories enter you. This is no more than the beginning. Now you must train. Learn to control the life force within you. With time, you will master it. We stand on an ancient battleground. A great war was waged here. The spirit of the fight lingers. The Aether reaches for the chakra. It aids in their opening. That is why we mu that is why we monks seek such lands. Eric seeks these lands for reasons of his own. The fate favor the fates favor you in this. Follow him. Your chakra will grow ever more. Hmm. Professor Eric is living. Leaving. Fear not. I will see to his safety. Please, brother, the Aetherometer. Gather it and bring it to the Goldsmith's Guild. And just like that, I became a member of a monastic order. Wowie. Oh, hi. Bye. I don't have my soul crystal yet. Oh, boo hoo. Okie dokie. Wait. Yeah, let's just ride back. We're right next to it. What a cool guy. I do, in fact, like this Mr. Monk. Monkey. And this will this will basically allow us to go even further beyond. And to get through the main quest. Even easier. So that's very cool. Bum, bum, ba -ba. Alrighty, Eric, here you go. Well, look who's decided to grace us with his presence. Did you enjoy this saunter back? I was just about to begin my analysis, so if you have matters you wish to speak on, I'd ask that you save it for... You brought the Aetherometer. Excellent. I had a feeling you might not be entirely useless. Now, let us see what discoveries await. Hmm? Wintergelt passed along a soul crystal to you. Moved to join the monkhood by the boneheaded Claude, were you? Well, I suppose it is the, for the best that my peoples get along. But I do believe I will see to it that you are sent to separate locations for the next round of measurements. And I dare say the land to which I intend to send you is fraught with dangers. You'd best tread the monk's path quickly if you mean to, de to defend yourself. And me, me besides. I'm already level 35. Wow. Oh, and I got a... I have an AoE attack. A new AoE attack. 
Wowie. Muck acquired. Guided by the souls of monks past, a chakra, a chakra opens within you. Cool, cool, cool. Give me. And just like that, I become his monk. Ta da! Oh man. My gear set, dude. Gotta do all this again. I don't even use Gladiator, dude. I just grabbed it because I like my options. Okay, so it does automatically get put you there. Get out of here. God, I gotta freaking. My stuff set back up. Wonderful. Alright, so what does this do exactly? So it's just a decent AoE. Cool, 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 cool. Alright. Shoulder tackle. Oh, so this like instantly closes a gap. Gotcha. Ah, just the people I was hoping to see. I was a hair's breadth from setting out on my own. To look at you. Yes, I dare you say you appear to have been growing in brawn at the expense of brain. Right, well, let us measure some aether, shall we? And by we, I mean you. Oh, and the monk Simpleton, of course. Though contrary to his nature, he has already set out for the destination I assigned him. Thinking perhaps that you are far too stupid to take, much less understand aetheric readings. It is true, you are stupid. But the aetherometer shall do all the work for you, and transmit the data back to me. As souls more... <laughs> Suited to action, the monk Sibleton and yourself need only carry the device on your person and set about beating on things as you always do. It shall capture data as you trudge about the hither and yon. Aether is not only the source of all magics, but also the fount of all life. Yet despite its ubi ubiquity, it remains imperceptible. When a living thing dies, the Aether comprising its life is released. When this discharge takes place, a portion of that ether rem remains. It, God damn it! No doubt you have ethereal crystallizations, physical manifestations, average of the disease, luminescent glow known as the ethereal threshold. In short, the more violent and dramatic the loss of life, the greater the amount of ether left behind, either in its imperceptible form or in crystallizations. And where are the most lives lost in this manner? Cemeteries? No false, you idiot. Battlefields! Do you not see? With aetheric, re with aetheric readings of those locations, 
we can discern the scale and more of the battles that took place there. As for those fool beliefs the monk had keeps, chakra and spiritual energies and whatnot, if I were to allow that they ever truly exist, I would be inclined to say that they are one and the same as Aether itself. The Aether churning around these ancient, ancient battle sites comes to naturally settle in the surrounding life, both plant and animal, though more so in the latter. It accumulates within them. Felling these beasts then releases that Aether, causing a surge that resonates within the Aether within you, causing it to expand, the so-called opening of the chakra. By this, the very power of life itself grows within you. A watered-down explanation, but adequate for one of your mental prowess, I believe. My own wife never had the patience for such things either, nor my passion. She cursed me and my work, work took our children and returned to Alamigo. But now is not the time for that tale. The area I am placing in your charge is Bloodshore, in eastern Lenosha. Place the Aetherometer in an appropriate location, and after a spell, retrieve it and bring it to me. I obtain the data I require, and you and the monk, you and the monk simpleton are afforded the chance to indulge in your, how shall I put it, charming little backward fantasies. All are happy. Ideally, I would prefer you have a knowledgeable understanding of Bloodshore's history, but I fear we lack the time for me to educate you. I need hardly, hardly tell you that my research takes precedence over your schooling. You got it. Fucking nerd. Anyway. Western Lenosha. Negative, negative, negative. Eastern Lenosha. Whew. Got that right in the act. <laughs> it's on the other goddamn side of the region. <sighs> Alrighty. What we got here? Leaves, and this is probably a dungeon. Wait a minute. Tre tre is this a treasure hunting? <gasps> Fancy yourself a romantic friend? Do you oft find yourself gazing off into the horizon, yearning to travel in search of storied relics left behind by the heroes of yore? Yes, you say. Then do I ever have a proposal for you? I was accosted the other day by a slobbering drunkard. Bear with me now, I assure you this gets better. The most eagerly regaled me, from what I could gather amidst slurred speech and speech in Gobi's amounts of spittle, that is, with the tale of a treasure map he had stumbled upon in his travels. I don't recall the particulars, but I was emptying my innards of some foul swill at the time you see, but it sounded rather convincing to my ale addled brain. What I do remember is that the fellow mentioned striking out at first light for Raincatcher Gully to visit a miner friend. Did the prospect of hunting for hidden riches set your head a heart a flutter? I reckon you might still find him there. Wowee. Someone just become a robot behind me. I wasn't looking. Alright. I haven't been here for the Chocobo Keep? I'm surprised. Uh, bum, bum, ba -da. Well, Bloodport's fucking over there in Costa, Costa del Sol. Yeah, whatever. We'll take care of this quest first. Oh, diligent digger, there you are. Hidden treasures? <laughs> Another gill crazed greenhorn reeled in by old wine's tall tales, yeah. Yes, old wine, that's the doddering fool's name. Though mind ye have not known him to limit his consumption to any one type of brew. I saw him just the other day, I did clutching some tattered piss yellow parchment like it was made of solid mithril. This is my ticket to fortune, he blabbered, not half so elegantly, mind ye. 
before stumbling out of the tavern doors and probably falling flat on his mug like it's not. Did I see the map myself, you say? Did I ever? Why, the fool shoved it in my face so many times, I swear the moat left a page to take up residence in my nostrils. It was a mess of blue and brown splotches that L1 swore was Comp Bronze Lake. La Lake. With a big red X to the southeast. You're not thinking of going there, are you? Take my words, you'll find naught but a sorry drunkard in his sack of broken dreams. But what if he's a rich drunkard? He's in Upper Lenosha, so... Ooh. That away. For now, though, let's go to... Let's go to Costa del Sol. And then we'll go do the digging thing. And then we'll turn back in for a quest. And then we might start main quest then. Or actually, we'll have another monk quest to do, because I'll be level 40 by then, I bet. And then we'll start on the main quest. And that'll be real fucking PogChamp, brother. Bum, bum, bada. Is that a... Is that a pink toucan? It's a, f a flying flamingo. Wow. Alrighty, where? All the way over there, eh? Hey? Oh my god, is that called Drogo? Oh my god. I certainly can't believe it. Oh man. This place has some um, Final Fantasy X energy. Feel like I'm in fucking Kilika. With a bunch of orcs. That's what these guys are, and you can't convince me otherwise. They're just blue pirate orcs. That's That's what the that's what the Rugadin are. They're blue orc pirates. Sometimes red. Salty orc. Is basically what they are. Salty, soggy orc. Mmm. Wet toenails. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Mounds. I see. Whoop. Up this way. Those are some big ass crabs, dude. I'm not up for a crab battle. Although I may be up for a crab rave. Crab dance, crab dance, crab dance. Oh, we got a fight coming up, boys. Here we go. That little purple smoke, that's almost certainly a fight. Yep, here we go. The bound Aurelia. Switch to tank mode. Switch to all range mode. All right, buddy. And now you're done. You're done. Don't forget me. Oh, boy. Irritating tendrils. Those tendrils certainly are irritating. Am I just passively regenerating faster than these guys can kill me? I don't think so. No, no. Definitely not. Hmm. 
Nice. I've opened the second chakra. Wow. I'm becoming a wizard. Hmm. Can I swim? Oh my god, my chocobo just drowned. All right, Quentin, let's go. Oh my. This is beautiful. So I take it every... Every zone has a... Big ass crystal. Cause like there's a huge one in Panalan, the big old beautiful yellow one. And you got this one, which I assume is orange or maybe red. That looks very cool. What the fuck is that? Oh. It's a large buffalo, and indeed it is. <laughs> that buffalo is quite large. Concerningly so, in fact. <laughs> Let me punch in my mic real quick. Mm, you like that? Bet you do. I bet you do. I bet you do. Ba -da -ba. Alrighty. Let's go do treasures and tribulations. Or money. Don't mind me, I was just checking something. Oh my god. It's so pretty. Wowie. Wow. You can't catch me. I'm the Chocobo. Boy, I'm a bug boy. Look at me. I'm Weeble Wobble, the bug boy. I eat bugs. All right. What the hell? Wanus. Hmm. Oh, it's a poogle. Or a pood poogil. Pug. Who, who goes to the... Wait, don't tell me. You've come to help all old one build dig for buried treasures. I'll have you now. I'm driving just fine by myself. Just look at that beauty over there. Oh, I can blame you for being jealous of my vast riches. Lucky for you, I'm feeling generous today. So here's the deal. I'll give you the honor of opening my latest discovery. That's right. For one precious moment, you can walk in the shoes of Eldwin Treasure Hunter. Extraordinaire. Oh, now the cash kit won't bite or nothing. And before it's a mimic. Shabby casket. It's a mimic. And... Oh! Negative. Territorial raptors. Far worse. Yeah, but these boys are... These boys are pushovers. What a joke. Oh. <gasps> Pe Pelican? Pelican. Ah, I see. <laughs> okay.
Alright. Now, what are ya? What are ya? Still a mimic? Negative. We have a tattered coin purse and a broken bottle. Wow. Here you go, sir. Seven hellish, where did those nasty buggers come from? Oh, if I had my trusty pickaxe with me, I'd have split my skulls clean in two. Where in the world did those things go, anyway? Here you go. Fate failed. The thread of fate has been severed. Reload to save or continue to persist in this doomed world you have created. Now watch this. Look how loud winds has the finest showers it has to offer. And the drowning winds should be scared and drithers. And he ain't seen nothing like great by our gods gut. He should try if that's what it was. Open in the case gets shattered this year's bottle and this foul slop poured out. Learning the nasty buggers with its stink. I told you to be more careful. Now hands over the loot. May have opened the case kit, but twice all dialed when one did the dirty work. Oh, so that's it? You gave me everything? Well, I got more last time I sold me under commons for grog money. You ain't hiding anything from me, are you? Well, looks like we got no choice. We just go, you gotta go out and search for bigger and better treasures. Not the same treasures, of course. I can't hold your hands forever. Now, ship back and let all that one apart, yeah, for up his roving knowledge on treasure hunting. Personally, you find yourself a map. Once you have your map, then you decipher it. That means to look at it nice and good like. But then, when you figure out where it is your treasure is hiding, you go there and you dig it up. Sounds simple enough, you say that. I might be make it to look easy, but I can assure you it ain't. I treasure hunter and demand sharp eyes and a sharper mind. Ah, but don't be discouraged. Sound your skills like all had one of the treasures are sure to follow. Now, if you'll excuse me, my throat's feeling dry. Yo, same, brother. Same. Get out of here. This won't buy me a swig of their winters to keep his grog. What's a man to do to drown his sorrows? Go drink some seawater. Have fun. And now I'm a treasure hunter. Deciphering time war maps. You can examine a time-worn map. Wow. But I don't have a time-worn map. All I have is this aetherometer. I have these faded copies. But those are crafting materials. Wow. Alright. Um, boo -doo -doo. Hmm. Oh, that's how I get that in there. Hmm. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, I got the sightseeing log, and it sucks because you have to do it at certain times of the day with certain fucking the weather. I'm gonna punch up this breeder. Mamul Ja. There another lizard folk, like the Amal Ja. I wonder if they're related. Probably. A sophist. Oh my god. They have some pretty intense philosophy. Anyway. <sighs> Let's go home.
That'll be pretty cool. God, I am kind of tired. Wowie. This stutter wind. I love me some good movement speed, buddy. Oh, Smith. And this will probably drop me up to 40, so I'll do his next quest, and then we'll do a story about the Aetherometer. Mm -hmm. It seems the device has suffered some damage. I suppose such things are unavoidable in this line of work. I must see to its repairs at once. That is, after all, why I put up here at the Goldsmiths Guild. My Aetherometer is an ordinary device. I came up with the elaborate design myself, had the finest engineers at Garland Ironworks draft the schematics, and then commissioned the most talented goldsmiths to fabricate it. Wittergelt delivered the results of his outing not long ago. I must insist you take your leave of me now. There's a wealth of data for me to analyze, and I fear that simply having you nearby will somehow affect the processing power of my brain. Preparing the aetherometer and determining which locations to next investigate well, we cry her some time. Why don't you go and train those muscles of yours, or whatever it is you do in my absence? I punch people. Also, thanks for teaching me how to shoulder how to shoulder check somebody. Ta-da! I've opened my hand chakra. I now accept the next next thing. Yeah. Level forty, BB. Yep, and now I got an even better Grease Lightning. Which means my... Yep. From 2.23 recast to 2.10. Pretty good. Could be faster, but that's still pretty good. This is a fire. Increases damage. That's what I need. There is my DPS aura. Fist of Wind is for just fucking about. Fist of Earth is my solo or tanking aura. And Fist of Fire is my DPS aura. This is what I need. Ah, dear Weeble, so good of you to, tr to trouble yourself to come. Normally I might be cross, but my spirits are far too high right now. And it is you I have to thank. I speak of the data you procured. It is simply marvelous. You have a true gift for grunt work, my friend. I wish I had a hundred more assistants just like you. I've been in this field for a very long time, and I have been alone. Ever since that unfortunate mold tea fungus culture incident sparked my passion for research, I regret nothing, Weeble. Oh. Save perhaps having to share so wondrous a world with souls as unlearned as yourself. Daily performance has not left me completely bereft of joy. It is rewarding to think that my instruction has guided you to such success. Yeah, there, how was that? Shall we dispense of any further pleasantries? Very good then. I made yet another I made yet another career defining discovery while pondering which battleground to measure next. Eorzea is home to numerous locations where the Aether is in, ex in an intensely chaotic state, yet which never played any host any war. My hypothesis was that, that such flux my hypothesis that such flux in the Aether was indicative of a past battle, and all my research was predicated upon this. But to but turn the theory on its head, Weeble, if your mind is able, if, if your mind is able, what if the people of the past chose areas of Roiling Aether to hold their battles? I've already sent the Simpleton Monk to take measurements at the fine sand banks. As you are doubtless unaware, this lies on the border between Alamigo and Gridania, which was the stage of the Autumn War. I ask that you find our monk friend and collect his aetherometer. Manual and tedious, yes, but he has an early make of the device that is unable to transmit data. I gather that Umskull is in Little Alamigo in southern Thanalan by this time. You think I ask, ask much of you? False. I ask more. 
Your other task is to travel with to Snake Mold in the South Shroud, and there take measurements with your own aetherometer. I will continue with my research here in your absence. Mind you, if you care to know aught of at all of the Ottomore and the fire sand, fine sand banks upon it, which was fought, I'll gladly enlighten you. You need only ask. Okay. Ah, oh, an honest inquiry. That sad, wonderful moment when ignorant curiosity overcomes pride. Right then, let us begin. <gasps> oh my god. I need hardly mention that Sildin and civilization is now centuries dead. Sildi was plunged, plunged into chaos in the wake of King Lalawefu's demise. Oh my god, this is actually stuff. I actually want to read this. This? Mmm, honey! The King of Springs as he was known. Despite the success of his economic reforms, the tax increases he imposed did not sit well with his subjects. This, coupled with a prolonged sequence of untimely droughts, fomented unrest in the peop among the people and in time sparked violent unrest throughout the kingdom. Still, D was not alone in its want for water. Ulda, too, felt the effects of droughts. The Sultan at the time, Thasagan Ul Sisigan, ah, but perhaps you recognize the old name. The current Sultana, Nanama Ul Namo, represents the second Ul dynasty. She is Thasagan's distant descendant. Ah, oh, now where was I? Ah, yes. Right, so Thasagan ordered an attack on Sil D to claim their water resources discovered as a result of Lalawefu's Flood Control Acts. But the royalty and nobility of Sildi would not remain idle. They mobilized their nation in the face of the crisis, and the people fought with great tenacity against the Uldan threat. The full strength of both nations met in battle, and the end result was an arduous, protracted conflict. But though arguably more desirable than surrender, the ruling Sildin elite took little pleasure in having succeeded in uniting the theretofore querulous, querulous citizenry to fight. Despite all they accomplished, every day spent waging war dragged the nation's financial affairs, which you will recall had only just been brought under control, back into the mire. To bring an end to the long military deadlock, Sildi devised and set about implementing a perverse yet ambitious strategy. It sought to zombify the deceased among its army, that they may fight again. At first it appeared to have worked, yet at the height of hostilities, the Sildins lost control over their necro necrotic creations. The undead turned on their masters, and before long the zombification had spread to a majority of the population. Ever knowing an opportunity when they saw one, the Uldans used this to justify their war, now proclaiming it a crusade to send these zombies to Thal. After seeing to the extermination of all zombies outside the city, they then sealed the gates of Sildi, Sildi trapping both, entrapping both the living and dead within. And that, in brief, is a history of the fall of Sildi. I pray that, I only pray that your feeble mind is able to retain it. Interesting. So that explains why there's zombies all over Eastern Thanalan. Gotcha. Study of Aether. As I laboriously ex explained, Aether is not only the source of all magics, but also the font of all life. Uh, yet despite its ubiquity, yep, yep, we've run this. Pushing out of the Aether remains lingering in the physical world. No doubt you have come across ethereal crystallizations in the course of your travels. All scholars now agree that these are the physical manifestations of great concentra concentrations of aether. I have a theory, however, that they are not the only such manifestations. Allow me to give an example even you can understand. That of ghosts, spirits, disembodied souls, apparitions of the deceased come back to haunt and generally unnerve us. False. They are nothing more than the luminescent glow of aether in the atmosphere. It is possible, though highly unlikely, that you are asking yourself why a portion of the aether remains. Right, well, the amount of aether that can shift between the physical and ethereal realms is at any given is instant, is limited. I call this the ethereal threshold. 
Any Aether present in excess of that threshold is left behind. The more violent and dramatic the loss of life, the greater amount of inner Aether released to take the form of crystals, or remain imperceptibly in the court, or remain imperceptibly in the atmosphere. And you surely recollect the scene identified as the most apt to produce such violent deaths on the field of battle. It stands to reason, therefore, that through the ethereal measurements of such sites, I'll be able to reconstruct details of the wars waged upon them. And that Weeble is why this military historian has a deeply vested interest in the subject of Aether. Despite all we do know, however, many mysteries remain. The study of Aether will no doubt continue to yield fascinating and awe-inspiring discoveries for years to come. Of that I am certain. So what I'm guessing is... From what I know, I'm not very well versed quite yet. But I'm guessing the massive crystal spots are, or maybe the battlegrounds that were going on at the time of the Calamity, that Bahamut just fucking nuked. If this guy's correct, and I, I, I'm an idiot, so. But though I'm guessing that those were the battlefields going on at the time of the Calamity. When Bahamut woke up, he nuked everything. And those giant crystal structures are... the result of the crystallizing Aether from all of those people dying at once. That's my... that's that's my theory right now, or what I'm what I'm gathering. Bloodshore. Very well prepared to, all le to learn all you ever care to and more to the land known as Bloodshore. The sanguine nomenclature derives from a truly horrific battle which took, which took place there some 50 years ago. The two greatest pilot free, pirate fleets of the day, the League of Lost Bastards and the followers of Rishar Mistbeard, met one another at sea just off the coast. To this very day, none can say with certainty who shot first, nor why. Mayhap there was no good reason at all. All know the two pirate leaders loathed one another, and when dealing with pirates, little more than is than that is needed to ignite a war. By the by, it just so happens that the head of the League of the Lost Bastards, one Bluefist, was father to the current Admiral of Limsa Lominsa. It is told that the old sea dog wished for his daughter to take command of his fleet upon his death. But that is another time. A tale for another time. Suffice it to say, a shot was fired and the mightiest pirate armadas in the realm came to fight on one of the bloodiest battles came to fight one of the bloodiest naval battles in Aeor's in history. All told, seven galleys were sunk that day, and dozens of smaller warships. Four of the seven galleys went down in mere moments. When at last the smoke cleared and the cannons fell silent, hundreds lay dead on the ocean's bottom. It is said the foam of the tide was was tinged red with blood for days after the battle, and bodies washed ashore for weeks to follow. But as you can see, geography and historial history are inex inex inextricably linked. Regrettably, the region has recently been purchased by a wealthy old Don merchant named Gegaruju. He has chosen to turn a blind eye to the land's history and has taken to call it c calling it Costa del Sol. And I believe I will stop there concerning Bloodshore and allow your feeble brain to process all it has heard. Wow. What about Fine Sand Banks? Ah, the Fine Sand Banks have a rich history indeed. They're found on the west shore of the Velodena River. The ri river. River. At the foot of a now extinct volcano overlooking the Rothlit Sound. The area is a sedimentary basin formed by a deposit of fine, fine silts and sands carried by the river. Today it falls within Gridanian territory, but in days past it belonged to my own home nation, Alamigo. A century ago, King Manfred came to power in Alamigo, and decided to expand the nation's territory in order to promote economic growth. To that end, he ordered the Alamigan army to undertake large-scale campaigns that would eventually lead to the onset of the Autumn War. Naturally, such action was met with vehement opposition from the other nations. Gridania, fearing encroachment along its border with Alamigo, placed the renowned lancer Vanchelon 
in command of, in command of its standing armies, and war began. His opponent, his opponent was Gilvard, the great general of Alamigo, a fervent believer in the fist of Ralgar, and a man who enjoyed an enormous popularity among the Alamegan people. The two leaders were loved by their troops, and at the outbreak of the war, morale on, on both sides was very high. The armies clashed time and all along the border. Time and again all along the border, neither general yielding an elm. But in a galling twist of fate for Gridania, Ben Shalon suddenly took deathly ill. After no victor emerged following the Battle of Fine Sand Banks, Ben Shalon devised a new strategy. He ordered his, fortress, his forces to retreat to Camp Nine Ivies, fully intending for Gilbard to give chase. This would lure the Alamegans to terrain more favorable and familiar to the Gridanians. He died, however, before he was able to see his plan executed. Now, the man who would replace him, Osborne, was, an extreme, was extremely ambitious and eager to prove his worth to the Seed Seers. Having neither the mind nor patience for Vanchalon's defensive war, however, he ordered a frontal assault on the Alamegan position. When Gilbard learned of this, if plan it may be called, he secretly deployed, deployed troops to the most vital points along the fine sand banks. The Gridanian forces had scarcely entered the area before they began to suffer heavy losses from highly coordinated Al Alamegan ambushes. In response, Osben ordered a forced march, permitting his troop no rest for several days as he, att as he attempted to surge through the region. Eventually, exhausted, the Gridanians came to entrench themselves on a hill. But this is precisely what Gilbart had wanted. He surrounded the hill with 6,000 soldiers to deny the forest born any hope of retrieving water, and then proceeded to rain down barrage after barrage of arrows upon the encampment. In this seemingly hopeless position, the morale of the Gridanians quickly dwindled. Following two failed attempts to break free, Osborne himself led the van in a third and final charge. In the end, Gridania was defeated. Osborne and several of his officers were captured, and the legendary staff Claustrum, lent him by one of the Seed Seers, was taken. This abject defeat accounted for what little morale remained among his surviving troops, and they beat a desperate retreat to Five Hangs with the relentless Alamegans harrying them every step of the way. Gilbard's victory brought him ever greater accolades from his country, and as a result, both he and the Fist of Ralgar came to wield considerable political power. And that is a brief history of the Fine Sand Banks. No, you needn't thank me. Knowing there is little less, a little less ignorance in the world is all the reward I require. Wow. Wowie. Anyway. Let's go to a little Alamigo. My little amigo. Dr. Wittergill. Wait a minute, I'm the little amigo. Wow. Wow. Where are you? Oh, he's all the way out here. All the way out here. Hey, Wittergill. How you doing? You've come far. It is good to see you, brother. You came for my thermometer. It is not ready to give. My work is not finished. I came as soon as I was told, but the readings require more time. Do not worry, they will be ready soon. You make for Snake Molt in the South Shroud. Eric believes the Aether's strong there, yet that land hosted no great battles. He told me as much this morn. Leave me to my task here. Make for Snake Molt. Take your readings. My work will soon be done. I'll bring the device to you. I've troubled you to come here. I will not trouble you to wait. Go. We will meet at Snake Molt, brother. Something's about to go down. Something's about to go down. Something's about to go down. I think that guy might be about to die. 
Uh-oh. Either that or we are definitely getting a fight. And then he'll probably show up and we'll learn the fists of fire from him. Won't that be neat? Wowie. So you're just for the left quest. Alright. Aight. We go this way. Turtle, turtle, turtle. Oh, hey, red belly. Red bellies. I know those boys. Some of those boys helped me out. Kick the shit out of a traitor. Strobers. Bunch of morbles. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Gotta stay away from those trees. Because even though they're like supposed to be the protectors of the forest, they're also very asshole. Very asshole. All right, fine. We'll fight. I don't know why I was targeted on that guy. Oh jeez, I meant the wrong I went the wrong way. Oh never mind, he died. Yeah. Anyway. Let's start the fight. Oh my god. Punch a giant fly to death with your bare hands. Oh my god, do these flies have human teeth? Holy shit, I hate it. I hate it so much. Please. Cease and desist thine entire goddamn existence. Every one of their species needs to die. Well done, brother. I feel your chakra. It has grown. I had hoped to arrive before to arrive before you, but I see I am late. This land's power has gone to you. There is nothing left for me here. Ah, it is as I told you. We monks travel where either flows strong. There we train. The power of the land enters us. Does our chakra expand? Hey there, hey, Electric. How are you doing, my dude? This fine evening, how have you been? Brother. This bonding causes great unrest. The land's energy becomes unstable. It will enter no other until it calms. Doing okay, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. 
a little tired because I actually got decent sleep last night. So I woke up at human hour. So I should be going to bed, but I'm not. I'm instead playing Final Fantasy. <laughs> so much for my sleep schedule, eh? I feel nothing here, as you would feel nothing at Fine Sand Banks. That land bonded to my chakra, and now it's and its ether is now at unrest. The teacher's work means nothing. I took no readings. I meant to hasten here, but I was delayed. There was a gathering of the monkhood. I was summoned a little Alamigo. Heading to bed soon. I'm tired too. Get some sleep, my dude. Thanks for stopping by, though. The teachers, the teachers' chidings. Worry not, I will use my device here. Any result will suffice. The man has already reached his conclusion. He will twist the data to fit. It is a sad existence to sacrifice all for truth, yet be un unable to truly know when one sees it. Speak not of this to him, brother. He will see our aims. You know mine to be more worthy. Drinking not alcohol right now. I should get a drink. My throat is sore. What are you drinking? I'll tell this. I tell this to you. You and you alone. I'm of the Alamegan resistance. I fight for freedom from Garlemald. Better than water. That's a, that's some good hydration. I escaped the occupation. I've come here to fight, to gather allies and weapons. But these lands sadden me. The people have forgotten. Alamigo is a distant memory. The resistance here is small. They ate where they can, but it is not enough. This war demands a great power. That power lies in the chakra. We have a new puppy now, by the way. Oh my god. Adorable. I bet they're lovely. The teacher is not an evil man, but he thinks only of his work, not the suffering of innocence. His knowledge can be used for good. The battlefields, they can turn the tide. The chakra must of many must be opened. If this way is lost to me, no. No, I will have this power. I must. And end, an end to oppression. An end to starvation. Alamigo will be made free. I will see it done. My name is Jasper and he's an American Pitbull Terrier. Oh my god. Sounds super cute. Forgive my speech. It is a matter close to my heart. I will give you my device. But I ask you say nothing of this to Eric. I beg you, brother. Don't worry. No one will ever know that you are, in fact, a monk. I have a question, by the way. What it is? What it is, my dude? No, god damn it. played or know anything about Visage. I know the first chapter that was released like a year or two ago. Um, I know it got recently fully released. Um, but I haven't looked into it. I was told that uh, some people wanted me to play it. But I don't own it. Uh, so that's not on my current list. That's not on my priorities. Why you bring it up? Are you enjoying it? You know, if there are horror games scarier than that, um, phasmophobia for one. 
I wasn't really scared of vis visage. Or visage, however you want to pronounce it. Phasmophobia will get you. Um. Gonna message you about it? Sure. Um, I won't read it right now because I don't have any of my messages or anything open when I stream to save, um, processing power to, uh, so that I don't risk freezes as often, but, um, other scary games. I have phasmophobia. I figured, I thought you did. We are friends on Steam, if I recall, and I've seen, I saw you play it. Um, I think I also noticed you streaming it. Discord, okay. Once again, I don't have any of that open, so you can send me it on it, but I won't be reading it until I'm done streaming. Um. Outlast 2 is pretty good. The amnesias are pretty good, one and two. Uh, if you're looking for a more um, adrenaline type of fear, um, Monstrum is really good. If you're okay with loud noises, there's a game called Nun Massacre that is really good. The puppet combo games in general are really good. Highly suggested um, game, a uh, game producer or developer. Puppet combo. Um. Adrenaline fear, yeah. If you want to have those blood pumping, like or like chase scenes, or or you make a loud noise and you're like, oh god, the monster's coming, and you hide, and there's like, and he like this big old dude stomping outside, and it's like, oh god, is he gonna find me? That's Monstrum. Something that'll fuck with your head. It's really old, and it's not like pure horror. But there is a game called, I believe, Eternal Darkness. Let me look that up. Eternal Darkness. Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. It isn't, um, it's old, and it's not on like PC or anything. But it is one of the best sanity style, like sanity systems in games. Think the Psycho Mantis scene from the first Metal Gear, how people reacted to that the first time that happened. And just stretch that feeling into an entire game. The oh god, what is happening? Uh oh. Is this real? Is this not? But it's really old and it isn't on PC, so you'll have to get it either for a GameCube or through other methods. But Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem is also recommended for that. Um, there's some shorter games that aren't like super scary that I really like. Um, Cry of Fear, which is a free a free game you can get on Steam. And Nightmare House 2, which is a Half-Life 2 mod that you can get off ModDB. It's a source mod. And Underhell, um, only Chapter 1. It's unfinished. The team broke up. They went on to do other things. They that's not getting finished. But the game as it existed was really good. And that is also a free game that you can, a free source mod that you can get off mod DB. 
I'm gonna want to keep giving him scary games to play to stream. I'm gonna show what really good horror games for him, and he's liking Visage right now. Um, if he likes Visa Visage, what does he like about Visage? Here, let me go find something to do idly before while we're talking. Cause I'm enjoying this talk. Let's just up here and do an S dance. Do you know what he likes about Visage? Is it the... He's liking the storyline. Okay, so he likes story-based horror. The jump scares as well. Jump scare heavy. Or has jump scares. Jump scares story. I would definitely recommend Cry of Fear. Because it is a pretty good story. I really like the story. And it doesn't have too many jump scares, but it has a really good atmosphere. But it does have some jump scares, which... I'll be honest, the first time I played it, I knew exactly was com what was coming. And the first jump scare... Still got me. <laughs> really bad. So I'd recommend Cry of Fear. It's also free. So, yeah, there you go. It's a pretty easy sell. It's a free game. Um. Trying out Pacify, but it wasn't as scary as I thought. That's more of a, like party oriented game that's not really like big spooky that's like a horror themed objective game why can't I there. um Monster in the farms to get the fuck out of me, though. He <laughs> got him. All right, let's see. Well, there's always classics like the Silent Hill game. Silent Hill. Um, Resident Evil, stuff like that. You were really fast. Ooh, big sprinter. Uh, Soma is really good, obviously. Although that isn't so much story as it is, um... Or horror as it is story. It's like a sci-fi horror game. But it's pretty popular, I bet they- I bet that he's heard of it. Um, do you think that he would be interested in RPG Maker horror games? Do you think? Maybe not sure though. Well, if he likes the if he likes jump scares, I would suggest Witch's House. Um, there is a free version that you can find on the translator's website. A VG person has the old version, but there is also a version on Steam, which has new graphics and an extra, like, super mode after you're done. My step cousin, me. Um... If you're looking for, like, shorter, like, two-hour games, The Park is pretty good. Um, Tattletale is pretty good. 
uh, Slender. The Arrival is pretty good. Craven Manor is pretty good. Actually, Craven Manor is really good. Craven Manor is recommended. There's a shorter, tense game called uh, Blameless, which isn't like it's not really great, but it's it's pretty tense if you if you don't know what's going on. That is a free game on Steam. You can beat that in like like forty minutes to an hour. If that, if that, it's pretty short. Um. Phobia, that's right. NDDB. Phobia. Phobia 1.5. I heard great things about this. And this is a free game that you can get off of NDDB. I just looked up Cry of Fear. Feel like it should be co-op. Funny you mention that. It has a co-op mode. It actually does have a canon co-op mode. Um, it is, you're, you, it assumes that you've played the main game because it does not follow the same story. But if you don't really, if you're not really, don't really care about that, you can just play the co-op. Wasn't listed on the Steam store page. It has co-op. Trust me on this. Cry of Fear is, prob is probably my favorite horror game, and I know for a fact it has co-op. <laughs> um, Alone in the Sleep? Was it alo Alone with the Dart? Alone with the Sleep? The baby horror game. And not like baby horror game isn't, it's not scary, like literally. Among the Sleep. Among the Sleep. You play as like a toddler. That game's pretty good. That's on Steam. That one's recommended. Um. And I have heartburn, but I have no pills. I need to go get some tomorrow. Um. I'm trying to think. Black Snow, which is another source mod, is pretty good. I actually streamed that. Heartburn sucks, especially when it is uh, chronic and melting through your esophagus and it's all over the inside of your chest cavity. That's great. You know, let's go look at some of the stuff that I've streamed, because I've streamed a lot, so I've forgotten a lot. Let's go look at some of the stuff I've streamed. See if I can pull any recommendations from that. For horror. If RPG Maker games do wound up being wind up being good, Eeb IB is also recommended. Lost in Vivo. Lost in Vivo is amazing. Extremely recommended. Phasmophobia, obviously. Um, Shadow's Peak is really good for the most part. Not like, it, it kind of falls off, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good, like, for the first half. 
um, Penumbra and Penumbra, uh, the two Penumbras are pretty good. Black Plague and Requiem. I don't remember. Gray is another free source mod. That's pretty good. There's a game called Husk, which is okay. It's not great, but it's not bad. Bendy is pretty obvious. Bendy, Five Nights, those are pretty obvious. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's about what I've streamed on YouTube. For, like, horror games that I haven't mentioned already or that I don't think they'd be interested in. Um, yeah. Anyway. That's, uh, that's... Those are a bunch of recommendations that I have. I should probably, you know... Play my game. <laughs> Nice to know. Yeah, I've got a lot of game recommendations. I'm sure I could come up with more if I put in more time, but I should probably, you know, <laughs> play the game. I've been I've been talking to you. If I've been just listing off games for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I trust you've returned with both of my etherometers. Get back to your game, yeah. Please tell me you fumbling dilts haven't managed to damage either of them this time. You got it, sir. Oh, looks to be in order here. These readings from your device. They look promising. Very promising indeed. I dare say this data may yield revolutionary results. Your chakra opened a bit more, did it? Yes, well, ether is a most mysterious and wonderful thing. I'm glad this meaningful research could serve your nonsensical ends well. Want to be a VTuber sometime? Uh, same. But I have no resources to do it. What's your idea? Now, leave me to my work. Surely you can find some simple way to pass the time. Fighting, say, or I don't know, is scratching. I just need an avatar. Yep. Ta-da! All right, I got my DPS aura. Lovely. And now I'm locked until I'm 45. Yippers. Now good at creating, nor do I know where to find a good avatar. Um, For a good avatar, it'd be expensive, because you'd have to pay someone to actually make it, and that shit ain't cheap. <laughs> Or you could get a free one. Like a free trial one. It wouldn't be very good. And it wouldn't be unique. But it could be it'd be there. It's an option. Free program called V Raid Studio on Steam that can create an avatar. It can. I actually used that to make a picture. Like a joke. Here's my VTuber avatar picture on uh, Steam, or not Steam, twi Twitter, like a month, a month and a half ago or so. At this point, if I got an avatar, I'd want to be Weeble, because my god, he's so fucking cute. He's so goddamn cute. Pretty easy until the hair part. The Yeah, the hair is a little weird. May have someone help me out with that. Indeed. I hope that all goes well. Oh my god, is that Seth Rogen? Try not to become a gross and shopping adventure. Oh well, yeah, I go with someone with fries curiosity. Cutpurse might be eyeing you. Are you that cutpurse, Seth Rogen? 
Oh my god. Wow. What, really? I don't have any equipment damage? I just did like three quests. How did I manage to get out of there without any... Ah, whatever. That's a good itch. Why well, if I try to look like an anime with lightning blue hair color, hence my name. Yeah. I'm surprised you're not going with, uh, what's his name, Archie? Like, didn't you just recently rebrand to Archie? Or was that like a temporary thing? All right, let's go start the main quest. Wow. There's the character of mine in RT, R, RDR2 RP server. Yeah, I know, but I remember you, I remember seeing you talk like I'm rebranding like my, my name to be Archie or something like that. Yeah, maybe that's another leftover from whatever universe I came from. I, I change universes all the time. It happens. All right, let's start the quest. But yeah, that could work. Then Philly would have you investigate the mysterious La Habrea. Here we go. I'm afraid there is no rest for the weary, Weeble. You must delve further into the motivations of the masked man, the Asian known as La Habrea. This is an ideal moment to do so, while our hands are not bound dealing with another primal. At pre Ooh. At present. I don't remember responding to an Archie. Are you talking on Discord? No, I thought I saw a Twitter message, like a Twitter announcement for it. But I, it may have been something else, and I maybe I'm just a fucking idiot. To no one's surprise. <laughs> don't worry about it. We know little and less about the Asians, only that destruction follows in their wake. I should not be surprised if these beings are behind the chaos that racks the realm. If my fears prove to be reality, we must do all in our power to stop them. Earlier, I sent word to each grand company to solicit cooperation. The immortal flames responded to the effect that they have information on a potential sighting. This is intelligence that we can ill afford to ignore. Go speak with Flame Commander Swift at the Hall of Flames and Ul'da to inquire further. How you go about the investigation thereafter. I leave wholly to your discretion. But whatever you do, never forget that we are dealing with the unknown. You cannot take too many precautions. Be safe, Weeble. Uh-huh. You got it. Yep, this is definitely Weeble. This is how I talk. Wowie. Wowie. Ah, this is more like it. Oh man. <laughs> God, he's so goddamn cute. I can't get over it. Can't get over it. Mm, homie. God. Why has my voice started breaking? This didn't used to happen. And now it happens all the time, several times a night. God damn it. Oh, no. Anyway, Flame Commander Swift. Hello. The masked man. Ah, you are coming on behalf of the Scions, of course. 
Yes, as we've already relayed to Lady Menphilia. I've just got like fucking cat hair everywhere on my fucking my God. Hey, don't in the cat. Nose keeps itching. There has been a sighting of this rogue near about Eastern Thanalan. A brass blade stationed at High Bridge described him in detail when he alerted us to suspicious activity. I would point you to the witness, but I'm afraid he died not two days ago. Slayed by a marauding horde of Kikirn. Fate can be a cruel mistress. May have said something like that. I'm a roleplay storyteller in games like RDA 2 and, and GTA 5 RP. Yeah, I know you're really into that. But it read to me like you were changing like your accounts to be Archie. So I was like, oh, he's rebranding as his character. Fair enough. But do not be too quick to despair. Being situated on a trade route, Highbridge sees its fair share of travelers. Folks are always coming and going, and some among them may have well caught a glimpse of your target. You could do worse than to speak with a merchant named Hihibaru. The fellow's always starved for customers, and he'd no doubt welcome your attention, whether or not you have coined or the mind to spend it. Well, let's go talk to this boy. At the High Bridge, that is in Eastern Thanalan. To the east of Drybone. I can't even character for the focus until his story is done. Nice. You've been playing him for a while. Like, at least a year, ain't it, Ben? Ba -ba. Bum, bum, ba -ba. I have yeah. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. I see you on there every so often when I go on to like watch some of uh, to watch basically the only streamer I watch anymore. <laughs> Like, watch, watch, not like, I'll hang, I'll go watch this VOD later, maybe. Like, it's, oh shit, this guy's streaming. I'm in. <laughs> like, like that type of guy. Didn't think R2 would be the way he is now. That's character progression for you, baby. It's the mark of a good character. If they wind up in a place where no one could, where you could not have seen coming. As long as you like it. Welcome to High Ridge Adventure. Whatever you seek, I, Hihibaru, can provide it. Uh, probably. You're after a master man? Mm, not sure I have one of those in stock. Oh, you're after a master man. Why did you say so sooner? Uh, such an individual might have featured in one of the many rumors I've heard. You linger a while, may have you learn a thing or two, eh? I guess I'm hanging out here. That's what's great about RP. Indeed. I'm personally not big on doing RP. I'm not a role player. But I do like watching some of it. Like, um, I really like watching D&D. &D, specifically, like, two DMs that I watch on Twitch are really good. There's also a, he's basically a GTA, a G, he's a variety streamer that does a lot of GTA RP now. Um, named Octopimp. He's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. To be honest with you, you got it. Let me sit here on this tent while you're being honest with me. I've become a genie. The only person to be into role playing negative. I tried playing D&D &D back in college, and I enjoyed the gameplay aspects. I did not enjoy the roleplay. I cannot play a character. <laughs> I do not have fun doing that. Alrighty. 
already. Ooh, free die. Wow. When the Order of Naldal began excavating the ruins below, I had hopes that Highbridge would turn into a bustling hub for pilgrims. Not fucking care. <laughs> But thanks to the nigh endless beastmen raids, folk are too afraid to come within a malm of here. I sold everything I own to get my venture started, and I'm loath to give it up without making an earnest effort to stick it out. But if things keep going as they are, I'll be bankrupt before the moon is through. <laughs> You've done some touches on your logo. It has been like that since 2019. Back when I first rebranded as an S when I rebranded as an SCP channel for like a year before I got, before I realized I fucking hate doing SCP stuff. Not to say I don't do it anymore at all, I just recorded like eight articles this morning. But, God, it is not something that I could do full time. I fucking hated it. Streaming was doing pretty well for a while. I was getting like four or five viewers, like every stream, people were really engaged. It was great. And that that died out. And it happens. Whining won't do me any good though. No, for my business to survive, I need business. Speaking of which, perhaps you'd like to browse my wares. Send a bit of coin to help a struggling merchant. But now I can bring it up. Yeah, you haven't been around for a minute, so fair enough. <laughs> we ain't talked in a little while. In a little while. Masked man, I'll take your bloody masked man. I know what I said before, but vague rumors are all I've got. If you want to know about him, go and ask the other merchants. Fine, she. Well, she is fine. I'll go talk to Mr. Go Go Shoes over here. That's why I stopped by tonight, and it's good to see ya. Multiloquent merchant. Now oh, I have heard tell of the masked devil. Seems he's been appearing not only around Highbridge, but elsewhere about Thanalan, too. Now, Fulga reported seeing him to convince me he's more than a mere figment of the imagination, but little is known about him otherwise. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. I mean, La Habrea will probably turn up if I just keep doing things. The man seems to love me. On the trail of a masked man, I have heard of him, but only in hushed tones and faint whispers. It said that he wears a black hooded robe and looks right suspicious. And that's all about I can say, little though it is. Alright, thanks you, thanks, thanks you. Thanks to you. Mm -hmm, mm hmm That's a good word. Impassive merchant. Have I seen a man, ma masked man wearing a dark robe? No, I haven't, nor do I wish to. The business is bad enough without shady characters looking about. Folks have been given High Bridge a wide berth because of all the Kakarian raids. None but the most devout of pilgrims are willing to come, any or any come here anymore. Aw, oh, feels bad, man. But I come through here all the time. On account of I need to go this way to get to Gadania. Except not anymore, because I can just teleport. Lol. High bridge is useless. <laughs> Judging by expression, I take it you didn't learn much of use. Look, I'm sorry for my rudeness, uh, rudeness earlier. It's just that things are tough for us merchants at the moment. The Kakarin raids are so constant and so organized that we're beginning to suspect that someone is orchestrating it all. I tend to put my own welfare first, like most of us do, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad person. I promise to keep an eye out for your masked man. If I see or hear anything, you'll be the first to know. Wow. I finally got some honest to God's information on your masked man. Why so confident? Because I saw him with my own two eyes. I was out for an evening stroll, minding my own business, when I noticed a column of smoke rising from a cliff over Thal's, res Thal Thal's respite. Curious, I took myself to there to find a masked man. You are a masked man, I'm sure of it. Standing by a fire. 
as if in answer, some Kakarian appeared soon after, and the group began talking at length. I'm afraid that... Was that a flying gorilla? I'm afraid I was too far out of earshot to hear much of anything. After the group had disappeared, an idea came to me. If you were to use this smoldering gold to start a fire, you might be able to arrange a similar meeting. It will be dangerous, I shouldn't doubt. But you've proven yourself more than a match for a pack of rats. So what do you think? That's some sound, reliable information, even if I do say so myself. Well, with all the lingering about you've been doing, wouldn't you say? Wow, some actual information. Let's go kick this guy's ass. With my hands. Fist his ass. With my hand. I'm going to fist a man. That's what I do. I'm a professional fister. It's my job. I'm a monk. God, I love furbles. Look at these little shits. Too bad they're literally spawns of hell. Geronimo Yeehaw Silver Yeehaw Anyway Come on Quentin Let's go up here and get in a fist fight Oh my god! It's the Corpse Brigade! Anyway. The Ward of the... Wait. I got a thing for that? That was it? Wow. What a quest. I thought I was going to do a thing. Instead, I just walked up and got in a fight at fist fight. Heading off, you have a great stream. It was good talking to you again. It was great to see you again, too, my dude. Have a good night. Thank you for stopping by. I might actually wrap up early because, you know, it's midnight and I'm tired. Maybe. Maybe. I did finally unlock a monk, so that's really cool. Cha-cha, real smooth. Um, yeah, that means I can play a class that isn't fucking Garbo when I go into the right when I go into dungeons anymore. Looking forward to that. I'm back so soon. Were you able to find any clues leading to your masked man? Yep, here we go. How I warded the destroyer, apparently. <laughs> this is scroll. It bears a prayer to Ralgar, the destroyer. In case you're unfamiliar, Ralgar is the guardian deity of Alamigo, which is currently under Garlean rule. It's highly uncommon for folk of other nations to revere him. I'd wager my last gill that your assailant was Alamigan. It seems his master man of yours is very well connected. I must confess, the merchant in me envies such a diverse network of contacts. The self-same merchant also senses danger ahead, and darkness besides. Are you certain you'd rather not take things nice and slow here at Highbridge? Negative. The Almegan bandit you had a run-in with is somehow connected to your masked man of mystery. So it stands to reason that if you want to pick up the trail again, you should head toward Little Alamigo over in southern Thanalan. Just so you know what to expect, the settlement is a favorite destination for those refugees who couldn't well, adapt to life in Uldah. The hearts of the denizens are said to be as barren as the wasteland they live in. And for all intents and purposes, it's a lawless place. Be prepared for a not-so-warm welcome. Now, I'm not as certain how much a help she will be, but it just so happens I have a daughter who has, uh, relocated to little Alamigo. Her name is Hihira, and it shouldn't, he it shouldn't hurt to seek her out first. And while you have her attention, I'd be obliged if you could send my love 
Not a gate. Not a day goes by that I don't think of her. I suppose this is it, Hen. I'd hope that you would linger her a while, call some friends, spin some coin, what have you. But something tells me you're destined for greater things. Wherever it is you end up, I wish you the best. Wow, thanks, Yihibaru. You're kind of a shit. Anyway, I am actually going to call it here. My throat is sore. It is late. I am tired. So we will end it early for what I would like. But a few hours, still respectable. Thank you all for hanging out. I hope that you had a good time. And I will see you all later. <laughs>